It's getting closer and closer. In about two weeks, we're all going out to vote. The campaign has been really long and it has been tough. And this week, we take a look at how President Emerson Mnangagwa has run his campaign. We want to look back at his campaign and how he could win this election. Now wait a minute, calm down, before you all throw away your phones, listen. In our next episode, we're going to look at Nelson Chamisa. We will look at how he has run his campaign. We will talk about how he too could be declared the winner come July 30. This is how close and unpredictable this election is going to be. But today, let's look at how the president has gone about it. ED has definitely campaigned differently. No widespread violence, none of the intimidation we used to see in the Mugabe days. Instead, what Mnangagwa has done is to switch up things on the campaign strategy. He looks like a guy who knows his limits. He's not the best speaker. He's not the most charismatic politician we've ever seen. He's more of an organizer than a campaigner. So he's played to his strengths in this campaign. This is what ED has done to win. First, he has worked to reorganize and rebuild the party structures. Remember before November, ZANU-PF had dismantled its district coordinating committees, the DCCs. These committees used to organize the party at the grassroots. By making sure his party is organized at cell level, Brandagwa put his campaign on a solid footing. When you have structures in every ward around the country, it means you have someone campaigning for you everywhere. So you don't have to do too many rallies. As a result, ZANU-PF has fielded candidates in every single ward. The president's opponents haven't managed to do that and there will be places where the MDC isn't present at all. Now while the opposition focused on big rallies from the start, ED started out small. Small meetings, district by district, building up to major rallies. He set up cells that match every polling station. ZANU-PF made sure that members are registered to vote. On election day, they're going to all go out to make sure that every single supporter comes out to vote. And despite what the law says, ZANU-PF is still organizing traditional leaders behind the ED and his candidates on the down low. Now, if you know how most rural areas work, this is a big play. These guys run communities. They command respect. So ED did not just focus on gaining new votes. It was also about retaining the old ones. ZANU-PF has been working overtime to make sure ZANU voters stay ZANU voters. The war vets, the Chimbuidos and all the other groups were mobilized. But Mnangagwa has done more. Here's another thing he's done. He's also sold himself as the stability candidate. He's positioned himself as a statesman. This has appealed to some voters that traditionally didn't vote ZANU-PF. This way, he got a lot of big money behind him. Never before have we seen ZANU-PF spending this much money on a campaign. The cars, the buses, the party regalia, all those massive billboards, the big money spent on big media campaign. All the donations we saw at rallies. We don't like to say it out loud, but it's a fact. Big money does win elections. This happens everywhere in the world. As an incumbent, Idi has the advantage over his rivals. He has access to state resources so he can fly from one rally to the next. And for the first time, we saw ZANU-PF going to campaign to voters they never used to really care about. The Muslim community, the colored community, the Asian community, even white farmers. But while trying to recruit all these new voters, ED made sure he kept the ZANU-PF base strong. Three times a year, he attended apostolic church meetings. He's not crazy. He knows the numbers. This is the biggest religion in the country. 32%. That's the number of households in Zimbabwe that are part of this faith. These are guys that vote in blocks, and anyone who wants to win has to talk to them. ED made sure that farmers never forgot about command agriculture. It's his claim to fame. For the first time in years, GMB this year paid farmers quickly. By the end of the season, GMB had paid 95% of the farmers that delivered grain to its depots. Long back, farmers would go for a season or more without being paid. That's 36 million into the pockets of maize farmers. There's been a lot of problems for President Mnangagwa too in this campaign. The explosion in Blawayo, the primaries, the economy. He has been on an aggressive re-engagement drive, bringing Zimbabwe out of isolation, charming international investors with his pitch. Zimbabwe is open for business. The question is, has he done enough to make sure that all of this talk of billions in re-engagement makes sense to vote on Mandarwin or Gwanda? He'll be confident that he's done enough work. Reorganizing his structures, making sure he secures ZANU-PF's traditional voters' base, the state resources at his disposal, votes of confidence from the international community, the support of big business, making sure traditional leaders and big churches are behind him, keeping farmers on his side. In two weeks, he may get what he has always wanted, his own mandate as President of the Republic of Zimbabwe.